Hello friends, welcome to another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I'll be bringing you a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19 and even medicine. Is it promising or is it full of hype? So for the beginners, I would like to inform you that the World Health Organization has already declared the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection which causes the disease COVID-19 as a global pandemic. More than 2 million people have already been affected by it and more than 250,000 people have already lost their lives. So scientists are really trying meticulously in order to come up with various vaccine regimens and various drug types in order to cope up and in order to curb this specific disease. In my previous videos, I've already talked about various drugs like azithromycin plus chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, tocilizumab, and I've also talked about RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, right? So in this very video, I'll be talking specifically about a very recent drug which has come into picture, which has come into limelight, known as Ivermectin. Actually, Ivermectin is a very, very old drug. It was discovered in 1970s. So before going into Ivermectin, I would like to brief you about the SARS-CoV-2 viral ingress, which I've already discussed in my previous videos. So what happens is the SARS-CoV-2 virus is a positive sense RNA virus with a non-segmented genome, and it's also an enveloped virus. It needs to be cleaved at its spike protein. The spike protein needs to be primed into S1 and S2 fragment. The priming may occur by TMPR SH2 proteins, transmembrane, serine proteases. It can also occur by furin and various other proteins. After it binds to the H2 angiotensin converting enzyme 2, a type 1 transmembrane protein, it gets ingress into the cell. It gets its entry in, into the cell via the endosomal route, via the endolysosomal compartment which can be a promising target for hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine which have been discussed in my previous videos as they are lysomotropic they increase the pH of the lysosomes thereby they inactivate the cathepsins which are expressed in lysosomes and again they can inhibit the viral proteasomal cleavage after this step it goes on and it starts to replicate via RNA dependent RNA polymerases right then there are two specific proteases main protease and papain-like protease, ML-pro and PL-pro. And then we have NSP12, which, have been already, which has been already discussed in my previous video, which is the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, RDRP of SARS-CoV-2. Now, in this very video, I would like to talk about Ivermectin. Ivermectin is an FDA, Food and Drug Administration approved drug for parasites. It's an anti-parasitic drug. It's a derivative of avermectin 23 22,23 dihydroavermectin b is also the scientific name of ivermectin so ivermectin what happens is it is very effective against many nematodes and arthropods which form which are which could be ecto and endoparasites and which are really causing a lot of havoc in the human body now how does it really act so scientists have found out that Ivermectin, it inhibits the glutamate chlorine dependent voltage gated channel in case of nematodes and it causes the pharyngeal and body wall paralysis leading to death. But Ivermectin is least harmful to human beings. Why? Because it cannot cross the blood brain barrier and in our CNS, the glutamate chlorine voltage gated channels are highly expressed. So it cannot bind and, co and cannot cause paralysis. And it has been found in research that ivermectin can also bind to importance and in case of HIV-1, human immunodeficiency virus 1, which is, a, which is a type of retrovirus, it causes the inhibition of the integrase protein of HIV-1, inhibition of integrase in the sense that it doesn't allow integrase protein of HIV-1 to interact with the importing alpha beta 1 heterodimer and if this interaction is prohibited it also prohibits the interaction or the ingress of the hiv1 virus into the nucleus and thereby it can also cause the prohibition of the hiv1 replication the same type of mechanism has been found in simian virus simian virus 40 sv40 has got tumor antigen which again interacts with importing alpha beta 1 heterodimer to get entry into the nucleus and ivermectin has been found to be effective against simian virus 40 infection 
because again it prohibits the it inhibits the interaction between the important alpha beta 1 heterodimer expressed on the nuclear en nuclear envelope and it completely inhibits the important alpha beta 1 interaction with the simian virus 40 tumor antigen tag next up is the dengue virus it has been found in research that in case of dengue virus the nsp5 non structural protein 5 also interacts with the important alpha beta 1 heterodimer expressed on the nuclear envelope so again ivermectin is effective at stopping at seizing at inhibiting this interaction and thereby can cause inhibition of dengue virus infection in the previous research the SARS-CoV which caused the SARS pandemic severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS-CoV-1 virus which is highly identical and related to the SARS-CoV-2 virus it was found that the nucleocapsid shuttling happening in the SARS-CoV-1 virus via the nucleocapsid entry into the nucleus via nucleocapsid and importing alpha beta 1 heterodimer interaction was also inhibited by the use of the drug ivermectin so ivermectin was a promising therapy for SARS-CoV-1 infection which caused havoc in 2003 now in the in one of the research papers published in the general antiviral research the link to that research paper has been posted in the description box below you can click on it and read the research paper for yourself in that research paper it has been the scientists have tried out cell lines and they have tried infecting the cell lines with SARS-CoV-2 virus and they have also administered ivermectin in order to see in order to observe what all efficacy dynamics can be happening the pharmacokinetics and they wanted to check the real potency of the ivermectin drug so what they found out was after 24 hours the viral load the rna load of coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 was decreased by 93 percent after 48 hour duration the viral load was decreased by 99.8 percent and the viral load was also decreased more than 5000 times the viral load of SARS-CoV-2 virus or the positive sense RNA non-segmented RNA of the SARS-CoV-2 virus was decreased 5000 times in the cell line so it's a very promising therapy and there was no side effect which was clearly evident after the doses that they had administered so it was quite safe in the cell line but since it's an in vitro experiment we have to wait for the in vivo experiment because the results could vary in vitro and in vivo results could vary a lot but since ivermectin is already a safe drug with a safe pharmacodynamic and, ph and pharmacokinetic profiling so it could be a promising target given that it comes out with flying colors it comes out successful in the in vitro randomized placebo double blind clinical trials which is the gold standard of any clinical trial so the scientists are trying and they have postulated that ivermectin since SARS-CoV-2 is quite identical to SARS-CoV-1 so ivermectin could be here also prohibiting the interaction of the importing alpha beta 1 heterodimer with the SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid so the same mechanism could be underway but it has to be elucidated there is no evidence in order to prove this mechanism but it has been postulated that the same mechanism which was happening in SARS-CoV-1 could also be taking place in case of SARS-CoV-2 which is the inhibition of importing alpha beta beta 1 alpha beta 1 interaction with the SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid so thereby it is prohibiting its ingress in, into the nucleus of the cell and thereby it is causing the reduction in the viral load so this could be the mechanism which could be acting but needs to be again confirmed via pharmacodynamic testing now that's about it in order to understand in order to comprehend in order to really comprehend this lecture that's all the conceptual finesse you need to have now if you have liked the video kindly hit the like button and if you have any kind of questions any kind of queries in your mind do not hesitate to post it in the comment section below i'll be replying to this as soon as possible in the description box below i have also put the links of other covid videos that i have posted you can refer to them 
and I have also posted the link of my Facebook page. You can contact me via Messenger app and you can privately ask any kind of questions that you have in your mind. I'll be replying as soon as possible. So if you have liked the content, kindly hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so as to get notified whenever my next video comes online. Thanks a lot. See you soon.